and welcome to the latest edition of the Customs Clinic videocast brought to you by Customs Manager. I'm Paul from Sandusky PR and I'm here with customs expert Arnie, who is the founder of Customs Manager. Hello, Arnie. Hello, good to see you. Um, so, as always, we're going to be discussing uh, some of the common problems that businesses face, uh, export and import businesses, yep. and hopefully offer some practical advice and tips to make yes. uh, trading with the EU and the rest of the world as painless as possible. That's uh, that's the aim. I'll try my best. So, um, now, I guess Brexit, uh, the dreaded B word, has mm. become synonymous with higher duties and import taxes and obviously this can prove problematic uh, crippling even for, for small businesses uh, in particular so I think today we're going to be looking at ways that you know if you import from a third country into the EU or you export to the uh, EU ways that you can reduce or at least delay some of those costs so, Arnie, what kind of duty relief schemes are available? Yeah, so as you say, um, if you're importing into a country, then normally duty is due, right? Whether that is the UK or the EU. So you can obviously use free trade agreements if you, you know, if, you're, if you can leverage those, if you meet those rules of origin. And we talked about this before. But if you can't for some other reason, then there are still quite a few opportunities for you to um, to maybe delay or, as Paul says, not even have to pay duty. So broadly um, in the EU and, and the UK, really, we have four main categories of uh, duty saving opportunities, if you want. There would be the transit. Now, we know transit. We'll, we can talk about that later, but it's called customs transit. Uh, which allows you to um, to not pay duty as you transit through a country. We'll have storage solutions. So you wishing to just park your goods in a country, there is a specific use relief. So you can uh, on a, you know, either on a temporary basis, bring goods in or put them to a specific end use that is authorized by the customs authority to not attract duty. And then there is, of course, processing. Um, and processing can, can take many forms, but if you are, if your main activity is going to be to process goods and not necessarily sell them in the country, then that also can offer quite attractive duty relief opportunities. Now, okay. there's of course a few other things that 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 are available, um, whether you know you import gifts or things like this. But these yeah. are the main categories that businesses should really. Okay, have. so we'll we'll go through those. Um one by one in a, in a moment, uh, if, if we could. Mm -hmm. um, are there, I, I mean, I suppose one thing is that people maybe need to consider is are there any admin costs? Because obviously these, these solutions need to be cost effective. Yeah, so that is indeed true. With all of these procedures, you need to ask to use them. You need an authorization and you need that by the customs authorities in the country that you are in and you want to operate this. So that means making an application, answering the questions, meeting the conditions. So the conditions are set out in law. And uh, once you have demonstrated that you can meet the conditions, then you will get authorized. Um, but the conditions include administration. How do you manage this scheme? It will be a self-policing, if you want, a self-management. So there are reporting obligations, there are requirements to keep records, there are requirements to um, ensure that what you input into a, a relief scheme and what, what your output is, is, is duly noted um, and the, that you grant access to the customs authority to come inspect your, your documents, your facilities as and when. So yes, there is admin, we can't get around that. But the, the good news is, is once you've set that up, um, and you embed it into your process and procedures, you're good to go. You're good to okay. go for, for life if you want. Okay. So one of those solutions you, or potential solutions you mentioned was uh, customs transit. So what, what, it, what is that exactly? How does it work and, and how can that help reduce duties? Well, transit allows you to move goods from one point to another. Um, either two points within a customs territory or uh, from outside the customs territory through a new uh, country or uh, uh, the country you're passing through and then into a, another country. So 
it already depends on the status of your goods. If you have foreign goods, third country goods, goods that are not in, in your country, and all you want to do is move them to another country, well, then you shouldn't pay any duty just by transiting through. It's like the transit we know from passing uh, through the airport, you know, interconnecting between between right. between uh, planes. So, you know, it's it's like um, you having two hour break in, in an airport. Um, you have arrived in that country, but you're not really in that country, just waiting to connect to another flight. So it's the same thing. You travel through and if you travel through, then you don't have to pay taxes. But that requires you to tell the authorities that you are just transiting through. Right. There are different types of transits. Uh, in the EU, we have external transit and internal transit. There's, there's common transit. So it's quite a few variations of it. But the essential point is to go from one place to another, crossing a border. You yep. don't necessarily have to pay the customs duty as right. you cross the border. Yeah. And I think the airport analogy is helpful, isn't it, in, in sort of understanding mm -hmm. that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. OK, fantastic. Then the other one you mentioned was customs warehousing. And again, you know, how does that work and, and, and what are the benefits? Yeah, so that's part of the storage um, solution. So, so when you want to bring in goods from outside your jurisdiction, what you do is you place them in a customs warehouse and you say, we're not going to let anybody access that. We're not going to sell from that. We're just going to store it. It's a storage facilitation. Goods that are just stored, regardless really where they're from, um, don't need to be dutiable goods. They can have their duty suspended because they're just stored. They never sold onto, onto the market in the UK or in the EU or really anywhere. And so as long as you can show a what the difference is with those goods that you are eventually going to sell. So you need to distinguish the types of goods you have. So that that machine is a third country, an American machine that is destined for, say, uh, Australia. Well, that's different from a on the same machine that you're about to sell to the UK market or the EU right. market. So as long as you can show this difference, and as long as you have a really good, strong system that allows you to record what went in to the warehouse or what went out of the warehouse, and you can show that to HMRC and say, hey, I'm on top of this, then a customs warehouse can really uh, help save hundreds, thousands, if not millions of, of, of pounds, of euros, of dollars um, by not you, having you pay duty yeah. and that. So it's a really wow. effective idea. It's very powerful. Yeah, yeah. So that's uh, definitely one to give some uh, serious consideration to. Is it, I mean, is it though more a case of delaying? Because eventually w once once goods are sold and enter, enter the market, um, then presumably there are um, duties and taxes to pay. Is that more, more one for delaying? Is And is that more of, you know, maybe attractive to companies with cash flow issues. Well, exactly. Um, uh, yeah, you're right. At some point, we we got to pay, right? But um, the hope is that it's not you who has to pay. Huh? So right. if, imagine if it's a UK and you are bringing goods into the UK, which you're essentially just going to store. Why would you pay duty? Right. Right. Why, if you're sending it on to the the next country, that importer. That, that is the person that should then account for the duty. Right. They could themselves put it in a warehouse. They could themselves um, use any of the other relief. So they could uh, leverage maybe transit, right? So instead of them bringing it in, they could move it through their own country and then into a yet another country or use okay. any of these reliefs we're talking about in combination. And what's even crazier is that some trade agreements even allow you to bring these goods in that haven't got any duty um, paid, that w where the duty wasn't paid. You could yeah. even in some really limited trade agreements, get these into your country under a trade deal and therefore don't pay duty at all. So you are right, it's, it's suspending duty mainly and, and paying it later. 
Um, yeah. You know, but there are legal ways and, and genuine ways where you can make it quite interesting to to use customs warehousing in combination with other of these okay. ways we're talking about. That's an interesting point because I'd assume these were you know different solutions working in isolation, but in fact you can you can mix and match yep. to to suit your your requirements and needs. Okay, that's an interesting point. 